Hello again all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we explore the science behind the Bionicle legend. In this investigation, we will be taking a closer look at the Great Spirit robot, its size, and the contradictions surrounding it. For anyone who needs a refresher, the Great Spirit robot, which I will refer to from now on as the GSR to make things easier, was a titanic humanoid robot built by the great beings to travel through space, land in the oceans of other inhabited worlds disguised with an island generated over its face and observe their cultures. Within the robot, the vast domes of the Matoran universe were housed, providing the living space for the millions of biomechanical beings that kept the robot functioning. In the Bionicle books written by Greg Farshti, the GSR is listed as being 40 million feet tall, or 12,192 kilometers tall when converting to metric. This makes the GSR nearly as tall as the entire Earth, with the diameter of the planet being around 12,742 kilometers. This is certainly an evocative image. A robot the size of the Earth would certainly have enough room inside of it to house the entire Matoran universe. However, when we start to look further into other aspects of the canon, some issues start to emerge. The official map of the island of Matanui, that you may remember from the Speed of the Kanoika Kama video, link in the description, gives us a canon size of the island of 489.09 kilometers from north to south. We also know from video evidence such as the Matanui Rising animation and the opening sequence of The Legend Reborn that the island of Matanui covers the whole face of the GSR. This is where the issues start coming in. If you place the 12,000 km GSR alongside the 489 km island of Matanui, you don't get this. You get, well, this. Instead of covering the whole face of the GSR, the island of Matanui barely covers its nose. So, there's our problem. We have several canon depictions of the island and the head being a similar size, and yet the canon numbers instead show a wild size difference. Clearly, if we're going to reconcile the numbers with the visuals, one of the figures will need to change. But which one? That is where the concept art of another key Bionicle team member, Christian Faber, comes in. While Greg Farshti was responsible for writing the books of the Bionicle story and doing much to flesh out the world, the initial concept of what Bionicle is can be traced back to Christian Faber. In his role as a graphic designer, it was also Faber that came up with the design of both the island and the GSR themselves, and in his concept art, he gives us a very different number for the height of the GSR. In his artwork, the GSR is instead shown as the much smaller, but you know, still ridiculously huge, size of 3,150 kilometers tall, making his size for the GSR closer to the diameter of the moon than that of the Earth. Comparing the sizes again, we get this image, a perfect fit for what we see in the video evidence, and lining up excellently with Faber's own comparison in a different part of his concept art. This makes sense when you think about it. As a designer of the visuals, Faber would have been far more aware of the initial size of the island of Matanui given in the maps. After all, he made them. And it was his designs that were taken by the teams making those videos mentioned earlier to be used as the base. It was part of Christian Faber's job to ensure things like this lined up. Whereas for Greg Farshti, that simply wasn't a concern. His job was writing the books and the comics, and his goal for giving a size to the GSR was making sure it sounded impressive to the readers. And a robot the size of the Earth certainly fits that requirement fantastically. So then, what is the true size of the GSR? Well, that's really down to your own opinion. Do you go with the books and the larger size? Or do you go with the concept art and the smaller size? Ultimately, it's up to you. Neither one detracts from your enjoyment of the epic concept of battles between giant robots that we know and love from the story. But this is the Knowledge Tower, the channel where we examine the numbers and nitpick the details. And from that point of view, there is only one clear winner, and that is the internally consistent sizes of the Christian Faber artwork. 
as well as being consistent with the other evidence, going with the smaller size of the GSR also makes a lot of the other aspects of the Solis Bagna star system far more palatable, scientifically speaking. A smaller GSR means that the planet of Spheris Magna itself can be far more realistically sized when comparing it to the scientific consensus on possible terrestrial planet sizes. But that's an investigation for another time. So there we are. Using the evidence available to us, Faber's size for the GSR logically makes the most sense. Time to end the video, right? Well, not quite. A Knowledge Tower video wouldn't be complete without bringing out some equations to probe even deeper into the nature of the Bionicle world. Now that we have our preferred size for the GSR, let's use what we've learned in the last video and try and determine its mass. As before, we will need to start with the volume of the GSR, which we can then use as a basis for our mass calculations. For this, I am indebted to Sketchfab user Box Turret, who built an accurate model of the GSR for free download in Blender using the Faber concept art as a template. The link to their model can be found in the description below. Looking into the statistics of the model in Blender, we can see that the model is 8.29 meters tall and has a volume of 2.6292 meters cubed. Using this equation from the Mass of a Toa video, we can scale this volume up to get the whole volume of the full-size GSR, around 1.44 times 10 to the 17 meters cubed. For context, Earth's oceans contain around 1.37 times 10 to the 18 meters cubed of water, meaning that when the GSR submerges itself into the oceans of a planet, it is displacing the equivalent of 10% of the Earth's oceans worth of water. Let's hope it has some way of counteracting this in story, otherwise it will definitely cause catastrophic, world-altering floods to any planet it visits. Next, we need to estimate how much of that internal volume is made up of each component material of the GSR and the Matoran universe within it, so that we can use these values to help determine its overall mass. For this, we'll be using a process known as Fermi estimation. Named after the physicist Enrico Fermi, Fermi estimation is a good method for back-of-the-envelope calculations such as these where little to no data is actually known for sure. Given that there have never been any official diagrams showing how much of the internal space of the GSR is taken up by the Matoran universe versus other internal systems, this situation certainly qualifies for that. The key process of Fermi estimation is to take what little data you do have and make educated guesses about the data that you do not have. Some of these educated guesses will likely overestimate the true value, while others will be underestimating its value. The result is that this over and underestimating largely cancels each other out, allowing you to come to an answer that is close to the true answer, at least within an order of magnitude. Enrico Fermi famously used this method to estimate that a nuclear bomb had a yield of 10 kilotons of TNT, with his only measurement being the distance travelled by pieces of paper he dropped when viewing the bomb test. Although the true yield of the bomb was almost double this at 21 kilotons of TNT, the fact he was able to use so little data and still correctly estimate it would be somewhere in the order of magnitude of tens of thousands of tons shows just how close you can get to the true value of something using this method, despite having such a small data set to go off of. Applying this method to the GSR, our first estimate is the biggest. Given that the GSR needs to contain both the Matoran universe and all of the systems that allow the robot to move, distribute power, fuel rocket systems, etc., let's say that roughly half of the internal volume is taken up with the Matoran universe, with the other half being taken up by the robotics. Looking further into this, we know that the Matoran universe itself is made up of domes connected by tunnels containing waterways and sea gates. This means that there will be space in between the curved ceilings of the domes that is not technically part of that environment, but rather the rest of the robot. We also know, however, that a lot of this space will be made up for by the Cardanui dome, which sits in a different layer of the robot's internals than the rest of the Matoran universe, and is described as being so large as to almost be a world of its own. Taking both of these into account, let's say that the domes take up 90% of their half of the GSR. 
This adapts our previous estimate so that the Matoran universe takes up 45% of the GSR as a whole, with the other systems taking up the remaining 55% of the internal volume. Next, let's take a closer look at the domes themselves. We know that they are primarily made up of three main substances. The rock-like protodermis that makes up the walls, ceilings and land masses, the liquid protodermis that makes up the silver sea, and the air that makes up the atmosphere of the Matoran universe. Again, given the shape of the domes, the internal volume of each will be mostly made up of air, followed next by the volume of the rock, and then the liquid. Taking this into account, let's say that of the 45% of the GSR made up by the domes, 30% is taken up by air, 10% by rock, and the remaining 5% by liquid. Putting a pin in the remaining 55% taken up by the robotics for now, let's use these estimates to get a mass value of the 45% that makes up the Matoran universe. To do this, we will have to assign densities for each of these different substances. For the 30% of air, we'll use the density of air at sea level here on Earth, 1.204 kilograms per meter cubed. For the 10% rock, we'll use the density of granite, 1,464 kilograms per meter cubed. And for the 5% liquid, we'll use the density of water, 997 kilograms per meter cubed. Multiplying each density by its relevant volume percentage and then adding them together, we get a value for the mass of the Matoran universe section of the GSR of approximately 2.84 times 10 to the 19 kilograms. Now that that's done, let's go back to the remaining 55% of the GSR. For the sake of simplicity, we are going to assume here that the 55% is made up of almost entirely mechanical components. In the Mass of a Toa video, we already calculated the density of metallic protodermis, so we will use that density again here. However, given that this section of the GSR would not simply be made of solid metal all the way through, we will reduce that density down to 2000 kilograms per meter cubed, with the lower density making up for the gaps between systems as well as other factors such as the existence of lower density materials such as fuel for the rocket systems. Multiplying our adapted density by the relevant volume percentage again, we get a value for the robotic section of the GSR of around 1.59 times 10 to the 20 kilograms. Adding this to the value from earlier, this gives us a final estimated value for the mass of the GSR of approximately 1.87 times 10 to the 20 kilograms. That is just under twice the mass of Saturn's moon Enceladus. Like with the ocean displacement earlier, let's hope that the great beings designed some countermeasures to deal with the adverse effects of this amount of mass landing on a planet. From its mass alone, the GSR would cause an acceleration due to gravity on average of 0.12 meters per second squared, or around 13 times less the surface gravity of the moon. If we assume its touchdown velocity when making a landing is similar to that of the splashdown speed of the Apollo era NASA command modules, it would still have a kinetic energy of 8,842 exajoules, or roughly 44,000 times the energy of the largest nuclear bomb ever detonated, likely causing massive destruction on the planet Matanui was trying to observe, if not somehow negated. Never forget, even when the GSR is of a more reasonable size, this robot is still unimaginably powerful. Oh, you're still here? Well, given that you stuck around to the end of the video, here's what the calculations of the mass would be if the GSR was the Farshti size. As I'm sure a lot of you would be quite disappointed if I didn't at least show that as well. 